Well, everybody, I gotta work on the Grizzly ATV. I haven't done anything to this in a while. Haven't needed to do anything to this in a while. Uh, but my uh, my son Aiden, yeah, I, uh, he was using it yesterday to pull the wagon because we were clearing some brush, and uh, he managed to break it. So, so uh, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Seriously though, he uh, shut it off at the brush pile, unloaded the wagon, got back on it, went to start it, and it would not want to start. So, uh, couldn't think of too many things it might be. But messed with it a little bit over there and finally just wore the battery down trying to start it. So brought it over here and charged the battery up. Uh, yesterday I opened up the air cleaner. I did find a uh, mouse nest in the bottom there. But it's got this foam air cleaner here that keeps any of that debris from getting into there so uh, I think that mouse nest although unpleasant was not really a consequential to the problem all right so the engine's cold obviously because that hasn't been running it's warm out here today but I'll still try it with full choke because it should do something what are you pointing at it's plugging yeah I shut it off the uh, battery charger mm -hmm. that's all so let's see what we get absolutely nothing very strange and I pulled the plug out yesterday and the plug did not look wet with fuel I know that there's fuel getting into the carburetor because this carburetor float valve has been problematic for me so it's actually uh, I've been having to get in the habit of making sure we shut the fuel off. If I leave the fuel valve on the on the bottom of the tank in the on position, gas starts to drip out of a vent on this uh, on this thing. So, so if I uh, if I turn this on and we wait, well, nothing's happening. So chances are the tank is low enough that it's on reserve. So let's put the valve in the reserve position and wait. Oh, Glass. Uh, Aiden broke it. No, so uh, there's no gas coming out at all right now. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to get a little scrap of tubing to put on this drain, the bowl drain right here, and we're going to open this screw right here and see what comes out. All right. So I like using a nice clean glass jar because this way, when I whatever I drain in there, I'll be able to see how clean it is. I'll see if there's rust particles or crud or whatever. Uh, tubing is relatively clean. So uh, with the fuel off, let's see if there's anything in the bowl for starters. Oh yeah, there's definitely something in there. Now the question is, is it water or is it gas? And we'll know that in a minute. Drain that all off and see what it looks like. All right, it's pretty much stopped draining at this point, so I'm going to shut this uh, little valve up here on the bowl. Pull this out. I'm going to hold this up and look at it. And it actually looks like it's pretty much void of any uh, water infiltration, which is good. Reason why I was concerned about water infiltration is because up on the top here, uh, this, when I originally got this thing, this was completely broken out. This is the, supposed to be the fuel lever, uh, fuel level gauge. Uh, this plastic piece right here was completely busted out. Water was getting in through there and water was getting in through here. Uh, I replaced this with a brand new one. It has now since turned to garbage again, but it's not cracked or broken from what I could tell. This used to have a vent hose that went off of a nipple here and went through that hole right there down to where it's supposed to go, just basically to atmosphere. The reason why that is gone <laughs> is because what you're seeing here, this being completely missing and all of this right here, this is actually the work of squirrels. Squirrels have actually chewed all of this plastic and chewed that right off. You know, you wouldn't believe it, but it's, I witnessed with my own eyes the squirrels going to town on this thing. So that's unfortunate, but 
it is what it is. So a little bit of rain might water might be able to migrate in there. But I mean, it'd be such a small amount, it should be pretty negligible. All right, so now I'm going to uh, open this again. It's a little bit dripping out of there, but I'm gonna open the valve. I'm going to put it in the on position. Yeah, we got plenty of flow, it looks good. So we definitely know that fuel's getting into the carburetor through the, uh, into the bowl of the carburetor. And again, it's good looking fuel. It doesn't look like it has any debris in it or water in it at all. So as I was explaining to my uh, young apprentice here, basically it's a four cycle engine, four stroke engine. We need three basic things going on here. We need compression, we need fuel, and we need ignition. So yesterday when I took the spark plug out to check and see if the spark plug was wet because I thought maybe that Aiden had inadvertently flooded it so I figured I'll take the plug out dry the plug off and we'll be good to go well I took the plug out a it looked dry B while I had the plug out I grounded it against the block cranked the engine over and saw that there was spark so we've got ignition so if we've got ignition and the plug was dry that tends to make me think we've got a fuel delivery issue which points the carburetor it's just strange that the thing was running perfectly fine and all of a sudden it just decided to stop uh, delivering fuel. However, we are dealing with a carbureted engine. So the other thing that we need is we need that when that piston goes down and the intake valve is open and the exhaust valve is closed, we need it to suck in air through the throat of the carburetor. And that creates the Venturi effect which will pull uh, fuel up out of the bowl of the carburetor through the jets and mix it in there and I'm worried that we had some kind of a somewhat catastrophic event inside the motor that's caused that to, that action to stop happening I did I think I did note that there was some compression just a quick test with my finger in the spark plug hole and cranking it I think there was compression so Maybe we've just got a, a jet that decided to spontaneously clog. So I think uh, an easy way to get around this right now would probably be to open up the carburetor, uh, take this boot off the intake of the carburetor and just squirt some fuel directly in there and crank it and see what happens. Uh, just found the whole problem. I unscrewed, I loosened this clamp right here and I was in the process of pulling this boot off and when I was pulling this boot off, I saw the whole carburetor moving and realized, lo and behold, what has happened is, look at this, the intake side of the carburetor, well, I should say the, in, the, carb, the side of the carburetor towards the intake is completely pulled off. I could put my finger right in there. So that's why it's not drawing any fuel. Um, what probably happened was Aiden, when he was trying to restart this, was probably giving it too much throttle for whatever reason. And at some point, it backfired. And when it backfired, or front fired if you want to get technical, uh, it blew the carburetor right off of the intake. That is a common occurrence on these models. A lot of guys have had problems with the carburetors running too lean or too rich, causing uh, too rich really, causing this kind of a backfire in the uh, in the intake, which is why I call it a front fire. But anyways, uh, it, blowing this right off, so that happens. So uh, I don't have to kill you, Aiden. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got to be careful when you're starting this. You don't want, especially when the engine's hot, you don't want to be using the throttle. What probably happened was it probably, because we didn't have any fuel coming out on on one of the settings, I think, so I don't know. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but that, that's what happened. At some point, there was probably a loud pop that you uh, promptly ignored, and then it wouldn't start after that. All right, guys, I got the intake uh, hooked back up and just tightened up. I tightened up the boot on the uh, intake side of the carburetor going towards the air filter. And I reinstalled the uh, Harry air filter because uh, I don't want it to 
instantly suck in any garbage that's still in the bottom there. I really should chop back that out, but uh, yeah, that's all right. So now, let's see, give it about half choke probably. And I'll put the fuel on. <laughs> see? You didn't completely break it. Why don't you tell everybody, because you're on camera, tell everybody what that is under your nose there, because people are going to wonder. What? It's not like it's something gross. Poison ivy. Poison ivy. And we got that how? Working. Working, yes. We're picking our nose. <laughs> All right, so that concludes this quick repair of the ATV. So the master mechanic, that would be me, okay? Now at this point, I could step back and let the apprentice, AKA the grunt. Hey, don't kick that gasoline over. The grunt can finish uh, assembly. Okay, that's wrong. How do you do it? All right, see these oh, you do, clips yeah. in the front here? Yeah. They have to go underneath here. Like that? Uh, I think you missed. See the big gap there? That would be an indication you missed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I didn't. That looks better. Now push forward as you push down. then they should click in if you did it right. Let me see. Now I did it. Let's see. There we go. There we go. That one's clicked in. That one's clicked in in the front. Okay. See the see how this side's clipped, but this side's kind of loose? Yeah. So here. Here. Hold the camera. What I do is I kind of push down down and forward as I like this see and then now it's clipped in on both sides I know it doesn't look different than what you just did but if you look this gap isn't as big as it was the gaps the same on both sides you see how this is flapping in the breeze mm -hmm. that's because those bolts are missing but don't, don't tell anybody